So I recently purchased a HP Compact Elite A300 um, small form factor uh, refurbished for around $200. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna completely upgrade it. New, uh, new RAM, new solid state drive, and a new graphics card. Turn it into a gaming uh, desktop. Try to play some Fortnite on it. So the next thing we need to do is to create a Windows image so that when we change out our hard drive, we can reinstall Windows. So to do that, we're just gonna go into the internet. We're just gonna search. You're just gonna search for a Windows 10 image. So this is if you're downloading Windows 10. Um, this desktop came with Windows 10 from the um, company that refurbished it, uh, Windows 10 Pro. So what we're gonna do is just go to this download Windows 10. So it's microsoft.com uh, software download Windows 10. And we're just gonna hit this download tool now. And this is the Windows 10 installation media. So what this is gonna allow us to do is create a system image of our current hard drive. Um, so we can transfer that over to a new hard drive. So now that it's loaded, we're just gonna hit accept. It takes a little bit of time just to, to set itself up. So now what we're gonna do is we wanna create an installation media. So we're gonna hit next. We're then just gonna leave the, the selected um, values to so the language architecture in addition that it's picking up from the current hard drive. So that's English, Windows 10, 64-bit. There's no option for Windows 10 Pro. You're just gonna leave it as Windows 10 for the addition. You're gonna click next. We're gonna say USB flash drive. Um, you need an, at least an eight gigabyte flash drive, which I have. We're gonna put it on this. We're then just gonna hit next. So what it's doing now is going to download Windows 10 onto that flash drive so that we can reinstall from the flash drive once we upgrade our hard drive. So uh, Windows is now done installing um, the media. Now when we go into File Explorer and we look at our USB, we have all the files um, for the setup. So you're not gonna wanna touch any of this. All you're gonna do is eject the hard drive. So now we're gonna start doing some of the hardware upgrades. So we're just gonna open the case up. So this is the RAM we're gonna be installing. This is what we're gonna install first. It's G-Scale, Ripjaws X, um, two sticks, eight gigabytes each. So for a total of 16 gigabytes. It's gonna definitely boost the performance. These are meant for gaming. So first things first, we're just gonna unclip the two sticks of RAM. And we're just gonna pull those out. So we have one stick of RAM taken out there. I'm just gonna pull out the other stick. Just gotta unclip both sides, lightly pull it out, and that's that. Next, what we're gonna do, we just gotta unpackage our RAM sticks. to install these. So you just gotta line up the RAM. You don't wanna touch the gold pieces. You're just gonna line it up. Just gonna push lightly. And the clips on both sides are gonna click into place. So that's the first stick installed. And now we're just gonna install the second stick. Too firm, and both clips are gonna click into place. And those are both now installed. So the next step, we're going to install the graphics card. So for our graphics card, we have the Gigabyte NVIDIA GeForce GTX 1050. It's the overclock edition. It's got two gigabytes of GDDR5. And this is the low profile version, um, which will allow it to fit into this 
um, compact um, desktop. So we can open up this box. This will be a huge upgrade in terms of the graphics. Um, currently, it just has an HP 2500 um, graphics uh, card in it right now. A little bit of tape. Here we are. The first thing we have to do is to just knock out um, a couple of these um, back plates. So we'll just turn this upside down real quick so that you guys can see it. So what we want to do is remove these two brackets. Just gonna have to lift up this clip and you're just gonna pop these buddies, these guys out. So those are the two brackets we need to remove. So now that we have the, the, bracket, the uh, back plates out, this is for a full size desktop, this mounting bracket. So we're just gonna have to unscrew this and put on this smaller um, bracket for this slim version. So that'll be the first step. Here's the low profile mounting plate. Um, so all we're gonna do now is just pop this into place. So we're gonna take off the pin cover that Gigabyte provides. Um, we're just gonna line this up So now we're secure, just gonna clip that back down and we are installed. Pop off the port covers. So now when we look at the back of this, we have our DVI, our two HDMIs and our serial port. So the final step for this upgrade is the solid state drive. So what we have here is a Samsung VNAND SSD 860 EVO, one terabyte drive, and the mounting. So we're just gonna slide it in like so. And then what we have is screws. So we're just gonna screw this into place inside of the carrying case. So we have all four screws installed there. Now we can uninstall our hard drive. So we're just gonna click this little clip. It's going to allow us to pull out our hard drive. We're just gonna disconnect the SATA digital cable and the SATA power cable. We're just gonna take these wheels off of the sides, screw them into, or onto the new cart. So now we're just gonna hook up the SATA cables into our new hard drive. Our data cable. Our power connector cable. That's just gonna lock that into place. So now our SSD is locked in and we're all installed with the SSD. We're just gonna start up the system. And what we're gonna do as it's starting up, hit escape. This will bring us to the startup menu so we can select our boot order. And we're gonna set that to be the flash drive first. Um, so what you're gonna do is go into computer setup, which is F10. You're gonna go over to storage, boot order. So you have your USB hard drive as your um, your boot source and now what we have to do is switch this USB hard drive above your your regular hard drive so that'll allow the flash drive to be your boot drive we can then hit F10 to save that we're gonna go to save changes and exit are you sure yes
So now we're just going to set up Windows. So you have it set to language English, time and currency format English, and keyboard setup US. We're just going to hit next. We're going to hit install now. The setup is starting. So now that I've entered the product key, I can hit I accept the license term, hit next. So we're going to install Windows on our drive zero. So this is our terabyte hard drive. We're going to first format it. because it is a new drive, so I just clicked on new. Um, Allow the full space of the hard drive. And all it did was partition it slightly, so it took out about a half a gig. And we're going to download our operating software, our operating system on our partition four, which is our main primary drive, which is 931 gigabytes. Go ahead, hit next. And now it's installing Windows. So once your Windows is installed, it's going to restart your computer. What you're going to do is hit Escape again as it's restarting in order to enter back into the, the um, setup utility. And you're going to go back into your boot order and now you're going to upgrade, your, update your boot order in order to make your hard drive, which is going to be your SATA zero, um, make that your primary. So that's going to go ahead of your USB hard drive. And you're just going to want to make sure that this Windows boot manager is now shown. So we're just going to accept that. We're going to go over to save changes and exit and everything should be configured now. It's now booting up, super quick boot. And with the, with the solid state drive, the install Windows 10 took about three or four minutes. Um, so I mean, it's a really quick install and the, the boot time is super fast so far. So we'll definitely see how the, these upgrades have impacted um, our computer performance. And hopefully that experience index is, is really high. Hopefully somewhere in the sevens or the eights. So here's our boot time. As you can see, it's super quick. We boot up in about 10 seconds and it's booted. I mean, it's a super quick boot time now. Um, way better than it was before. So here we go, now we're downloading Fortnite. Here's the right speeds right now. It's definitely looking really fast. Um, 370 megabytes per second. Should be a pretty quick install. It's a big file, but once that's done downloading, we'll run it and uh, see how it looks. So we're up and running, and it's running really well. I'm not using my hand to, to point in a direction, but it's running real well. Frames per second is great. No lag, no glitch. It's looking really good.